Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. I'm the Nerd Last Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American live-action video game film adaptation theatrical release. And today we continue down the tracks on the Ufa Bowl train as we review 2008's Far Cry. This one's gonna be a chit futter. Why do you say that, Pits? Ufa Bowl films are like Windows OS releases. Every other one's a chit futter. Well, I can't argue with you there, Pits. Let's get into it and find out for sure. Now, Far Cry was released in North American theaters on December 17, 2008, another attempt at a holiday blockbuster release, I assume. At this time, two games had come out in the game series, Far Cry and Far Cry 2. We're going to use the first game for comparison since the film is directly loosely based on it, as Ufa Bowl had secured film rights to it even before the game's release. The plot of the game revolves around a man named Jack Carver, who's a retired Special Forces operative that has started and runs a boat charter business within his tropical home location. He's hired by a journalist named Valerie Constantine to take her to an island off the coast to investigate rumors of secret experiments being done there by Dr. Krieger. A Krieger's performing genetic experiments on both beasts and humans to create powerful creatures called tridents. Upon arriving off the coast of the island, Valerie takes off on her own towards the shore upon a jet ski. Shortly after, Jack's boat has a rocket fired upon it by one of Krieger's mercenaries, and he barely escapes into the water before the rocket hits and blows up his boat. Upon swimming ashore, we begin following Jack along on his adventure, fighting through trigons while trying to find Valerie and unravel the mystery behind Krieger's experiments. The plot of the film also centers around a man named Jack Carver, who's a retired Special Forces operative that has taken up the life of a boat captain for hire, chartering tours and ferrying people to island locations off the coast of his tropical home. He's hired by a journalist named Valerie Cardinal to take her to a nearby remote island as Jack was spoken highly of by her uncle Max Cardinal that used to be in the special forces with Jack. Valerie had been receiving communications from her uncle informing her of experiments that are being performed on the island by his boss Dr. Krieger but the communications ceased mysteriously. She now wants to go there and investigate the reports of the experiments as well as find out what happened to her uncle. Secretly, Krieger is working in conjunction with and being funded by the U.S. military to conduct experiments on human beings that turn them into super soldiers with bulletproof skin and superhuman strength that are capable of going without sleep and mindlessly following orders. Upon taking Valerie to the island and dropping her off, Jack's boat is detected by one of Dr. Krieger's mercenaries and is blown up by a rocket just seconds after Jack sees it and then jumps out of the boat to the, into the safety of the water. Jack then swims ashore and we begin following him on an action adventure unraveling the mystery of what has happened to Valerie, her uncle, and what the nature of the experiments on the island are. Okay, so we have some pretty good similarities here, though some liberties are taken as well in regards to names. Without diving into the full plots of these to avoid spoilers, I can say that there are further liberties taken later on when you compare the two mediums, but overall the plots are quite similar. I can give the plot a hawoo. Pids, what did you think of the plot? So, how does the setting and world representation stack up? The film is set within a tropical, South Pacific location, just like the game. We get some similar environments, including jungle forests, military bases, and labs. We also see mercenary forces and get plenty of military combat, weaponry, and gunfighting like in the game. Though we do deviate a bit in the look of the genetically altered humans, and we also have those name changes I mentioned, along with adding some characters that did not exist in the game, or creating new ones that fit the same role. I think the setting and world representation is pretty damn close overall though, and deserving of a passing haboo. Pids, what did you think? Ha woo! Let's get into the characters and stick with just the ones front and center of the plot. We'll start with Emilio. Played by Chris Coppola, known for his roles in a film we previously reviewed, Postal, as well as Beowulf. Here he plays the food delivery man for Dr. Krieger's operations that is caught up in the adventure when Jack steals his boat and him along with it. Once captured, this leads to Dr. Krieger accusing him of being an associate of Jack's due to how low rung and unrecognizable he is. That's kind of the running gag here, and he mainly serves as comedic relief. The problem here is that the character isn't very funny. I gotta give this one a chit futter. Pids, what did you think of Emilio? Chit futter! Captain Jason Parker, portrayed by Craig Fairbrass, known for his roles in Cliffhanger and the film series Rise of the Foot Soldier. Here he plays the leader of the mercenaries hired by Dr. Krieger 
which appears to be an adaptation of the character Colonel Richard Crowe from the game. The portrayal is solid as an ex-soldier turned mercenary that is sold out to an evil genius yet maintains his loyalty to his soldiers as well as his ethics and morality that we see begin to sway him away from his poor choice. Screen time with him was not disappointing so I can give him a hawoo. Pids, what did you think of Parker? Hawoo! Max Cardinal, played by Ralph Moyer, known for his roles in Gladiator and The Scorpion King. Here he's the ex-brother in arms to Jack and uncle to Valerie that has been secretly sending her information about Dr. Krieger's nefarious experiments. His portrayal here is good as he is typically very good at playing imposing and masculine characters with a soft side. His role in Gladiator is of note regarding this. Screen time with him was enjoyable so I can give him a hawoo. Pids, what did you think of Max? Hawoo! Valerie Cardinal, Emmanuel Vogier plays the journalist and niece to Max who is seeking to uncover the secrets of Dr. Krieger's experiments. You may recognize her from her roles in the Saw series, as well as recurring TV roles on Two and a Half Men in Smallville. This character is an adaptation of Valerie Constantine from the game, and a very close one at that, other than a couple of alterations. She comes off as courageous and determined as a journalist who is willing to put her life on the line to not only get the story but also expose the nefarious dealings of Dr. Krieger. The acting was solid and enjoyable, so this is an easy hawoo for me. Pids, your thoughts on Valerie? Hawoo! Dr. Lucas Krieger, played by famous character actor Udo Kier. You may remember him from his role in Blood Rain, which we previously reviewed, as well as his roles in Ace Ventura Pet Detective, Johnny Mnemonic, and Blade, just to name a few. Here, he plays a fairly close adaptation of the character from the game that is the unethical scientist performing genetic experiments on humans at any cost, all for the pursuit of profit. Frankly, I love Udo and everything I've ever seen him in. He's always so cold, menacing, and calm in his villainous portrayals that it's always entertaining and delicious to watch, and that's no different here. Easy hawoo from me. Pitts, what did you think of Krieger? Hawoo! Jack Carver played by Till Schweiger, known for his roles in SLC Punk, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life, and Inglorious Bastards. Here he plays the adaptation of the character of the same name from the game. The portrayal is passable to good. It's not that it's bad. He plays it as a man trying to drown his past in alcohol that just wants to be left alone, but still maintains his lethal skills from his time in the Special Forces. It's in no way bad, it's just that something about it is, at best, passable. Nothing made the performance stand out to me. So, this gets a passing hawoo from me. Pids, what did you think of Jack? Hawoo! Alright, so we have some average to pretty good stuff when it comes to the plot and the setting and world representation. The characters are mostly above average performances to fantastic, so what's our final verdict here? Let's turn to the Pids first. Pids, what did you think of Far Cry? Hawoo! Cha, I agree with the Pids. This movie isn't terrible, there are some pretty good adaptations of the game elements and characters, but there's unfortunately something missing here. It never really grabs you and holds you with any of the action scenes or plot beats, yet they aren't boring either. It just never really hits you hard enough to get you moving towards the edge of your seat in anticipation. At most, I can give this one a 60s out of 10s. It's a pretty good adaptation of the plot and characters that unfortunately is only above average in its execution. It's a decent popcorn flick you can pass some time with that I can recommend to anyone that is a fan of the game or action movies in general. Just don't expect it to get your adrenaline going much. The Pids and I want to thank you all for once again tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. If you enjoyed our video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share to show your support. And don't forget to also check us out and subscribe on Twitch as well as follow us on Twitter. Until next time, I'm the Nerdlust Daddy, as always, reminding you to not be chit fudgers to each other. Body autonomy for all, reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Take us out, Pids. Thank yous all again for watchins. See you next time.